everybody, my name is Trevor. I'm Vincent. And we're with the Anthony and Todd Show. Today we're going to be reviewing MC Paul Barman's newest album, Echo Chamber. Uh, MC Paul Barman is a, a Jewish rapper from New Jersey, moved to NYC. Uh, for a while, he only had two albums out, but he's been around for quite a while. His first album, Hallelujah, came out in 2002. Uh, it was not super well received. Um, and then his second album came out in 2009, Thought Balloon Mushroom Cloud, um, which was a little bit more well received. But um, this album, Echo Chambers, released with uh, Mellow Music Group, um, same label that a lot of artists that we enjoy and have been like, they've had a really good track record for Open this Mike, year. Quale Open Mike, Mike Quelle, uh, and Gene Gray's latest album, uh, Laurent's last album, The Ordinary Man from last year, including um, Open Mike's Brick Body Kids, um, and Quelle's the, solo album. And the remix of uh, Ghostface Killer's 12, 12 Reasons to Die. Yeah. Uh, the Brown Tape. The Brown Tape Powell Brown. Powell Brown. Yeah. Just an excellent year so far. And um, I think it's a good it's a good label and a good re, restart from Paul Barman here. Um, Echo Chamber fe- has features from Open Mike Eagle and production uh, features by Prince Paul, who produced like the majority of this album. Uh, MF Doom produced a couple tracks. Questlove, of course, uh, drummer and co-founder of The Roots. And... Uh, Mark Ronson actually is his producer on one of these tracks. Uh, Paul Barman described this as his magnum opus coming back after nine years of, of um, what, a couple features here and there, yeah. just kind of doing his own thing, writing raps. Um, I'm not sure if he like performed live or really did anything in that time, but I know that he was just working on Echo Chamber, and it's, it's finally a release. And let me just be the first one to tell you that this album is utterly... Fantastic. It's just fucking... This is the strangest album I've listened to this year. And, like, we've listened to, like, a ton of weird shit this year, but this is fucking... This is... Insane. 100%. Any doubts you have... Okay, Paul Barman does not fit any standards as a rapper. He's real thin. He looks like Carrot Top, like, with, with brown hair. Um, he sounds like Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> like, just... Is, is not your average rapper. His flows are off. His, um... <laughs> I can't, like, it's just his rhymes are layered upon layered upon layered his production here um, or his production choices and and collaborations with some of these legendary <laughs> artists just work out to a T if you have any doubts about um, Barman being white completely shattered on his first two tracks <laughs> Echo Chamber and of course Young Man Speaks on Race um, really just talking about like being a member of the human race and like while he is white there was a time when like being Jewish was uh, being black or being Italian was like being black. And now, of course, being black is being black. And maybe sometime in the future, you know, maybe like being uh, green or being from Mars is, <laughs> is the new being black and everything just kind of works itself out. But um, his two commentaries here on race are just to a T. And I think that he speaks... Um, speaks about race from the perspective of a, of a Jewish man, a white Jewish guy, and it's not really a common perspective, and that, that's kind of a common theme as we go through the album, is speaking on social commentary from a perspective that is not um, looked at very often, and it's it's seen on a couple more tracks. Moving into 99.99999%, um, amazing Doom production here, amazing sampling. He's got some crazy lyrics, um, but his bridge is so hard hitting in such a such a short time. Hey fellas, if you blah, 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 talks about things like toxic masculinity, school shootings, global warming, um, as well as just like, do bugs like being stepped on? <laughs> no. Um, the beat just completely cuts out at the like around the first three and just leaves Barman to fend for himself with just his lyrics. And I think this is a really potent uh, moment on this album where we see that Barman can hold himself up with just lyrics alone. He does boast a lot of like really um, notable production credits here, but he doesn't need them. It's it's a tool for him um, to kind of just get across. Um, it, almost into the style of music. Yeah. Without it, it's it's just poetry. Yeah. But with the production here, it's just boosts himself up even more. He can stand on both legs with just his um, just his verses. Uh, the track "Believe That," which is probably my personal favorite, features over Mike Eagle. One of the two tracks <laughs> features him on there. It's just so fucking. Str- it's just 
lengthy. It's girthy as fuck. Like literally all it's just nonsensical. Like if I had to describe this album by one thing, it's just nonsensical. Like a lot of the flows, a lot of style, like everything that it provides, it just doesn't make any sense. It's really fast paced. It's really like wordy, ber- verbose. Verbose. And rambly. I think it's just that's his style. He makes very rambly hip hop that's very poetic and very stylistic. And the fact that he's able to go on this almost like long rant that just keeps on feeling like it's going on and going on, but you're having so much fun and you're so interested in the concept, mm-hmm. even though he's been like rapping for what seems like forever in the same style. And then Open Mike Eagle comes on with almost like a, a flawless transition of. It is 100% flawless. Of like, almost matching kind of the weirdness. That MC Paul Marmon has with uh, with the very stylistic art rap sound that he's mastered of the years with the very surreal rap style with a bunch of funny lines. My personal favorite being, "You can tell me it's Sin Cara, but I know it's Unico." I think that's utterly fantastic. It'll always be a wrestling reference. Um, but I think mic. I think it's it's weird how these two styles mash up so well and so flawlessly on this very almost. Sur- almost nonsensical project. MC Paul Barman is such a nonsensical artist. Nothing about him should work, but it all does in a sense. Uh, this very poetic Jewish guy is able to outwrap a lot of other people with a very unique character that is over a lot of almost old school or retro hip hop beats, but he's able to make them work into his own unique sound. He's crafting hip-hop into what he wants it to be he's not trying to like fit into a mold and sometimes i think this had like a lot of backlash in his past of course like i said uh 2002's Palleluja was not well received i actually looked up the pitchfork score at some point not that it matters the pitchfork gave it a two i was like you've got to be kidding me after revisiting this album time and time again over this past week like ever since it came out i've been listening to it um it's just hard to see like how anybody could be I understand how people would be turned off by the style, but to deny Barman his uh, lyrical genius and writing credits on here absolutely baffles me. I don't understand. Um, I, what I found to be is like half this album is Barman rapping about political issues or social issues, and the other half is just a blatant display of his own like credibility and his own skills on the mic, which is so much fun to listen to, but there's also a lot of like substance in this album. I think being poor is just kind of a showcase of him, how fast he can rap. Um, leading into the next track art of war with some really cool, like militaristic cadence style drumming by quest, um, and the whistling, um, like the, the, military like flute sounds uh it's it's literally just roll no role models <laughs> j cole but it's um just a little slightly different it's, it's just the same melody <laughs> um and it's all about like war and fighting yeah and just very short track very like conceptual track but it's just cool how it works out flows directly into tourette's um and and what Tourette's syndrome is and what it isn't um and as somebody with tourette's this track like really speaks to me where i'm like Paul understands what Tourette's is and he sums it up so well in such a short track that it puts what I have been like fighting against my whole life, what it seems, um, to shame. He sums up what I struggle to say to people or sums up what I try to explain to people in 15 minutes about Tourette's in a one and a half minute track about what Tourette's is and I am so grateful for that, I feel. Um, but not to mention, it's also, like, super catchy. Yeah. Um, of course, this leads into Commandments. Jesus Christ. This it's, is so much fun. This is... Do you know where the sample comes from? Well, Schoolhouse Rock, right? No, Sesame Street. Oh, is that what it was? Number of pinball. The same, one, two, three, four, same five. <laughs> same, same difference. I recognize but, it immediately. But, um... It's it's so weird that he's just able to rap about the Ten Commandments, but it's so funny and it's so just like unique to him because this is like one of the moments on the album where I, I realized this is actually like a art rap record. I, I don't I don't know if he meets all the classifications, but I, I definitely solidify this as an art rap record, especially when you have 100%. Open Mike Eagle, one of the, the, the basically the founder of art rap. Art rap can be funny because I yeah. think it's hard to be funny and it's harder to be funny in music yeah. and still be taken seriously. It's very it's very poetic. It's very witty. 
but the same an artistic but at the same time it has a lot to say about political volumes and it's also introspective and i think that that encapsulates this entire album but commandments just him going over every single commandment there's 12 commandments in this and he one. just lays waste to them as well it, it, and like it's a not only is it a critique but it's also he's able to remain in this character of someone who is reading the commandments i think is actually very funny like ironically you understand the humor in his words um as an as like as an outsider but the character doesn't whoever the role of someone reading the commandments they don't understand the humor in it they just see it as their words <laughs> I think that that's one I really enjoy about the track. I like how, just the commentary of it and how Ten Commandments are just kind of fucked up. I think that's what the no, track yeah. represents. It just it, it's a large commentary about Christians, uh, specifically specifically like the Ten Commandments, and it kind of just lays waste to a lot of like Christian mantras. Again, a little ironic because Paul is Jewish and like Moses created the Ten Commandments, part of the Israelites, they're all Jewish, whatever. Um, so it kind of like leads into his own faith as well. But the fact that he's able to deliver this in a very smart and witty way, as well as being, like, potent and um, talk about, like, some important things, again, that, like, nobody is really talking about, especially in music, I think it's just, um, Commandments is, like, a major example of just what Barman is capable of. There's so many layers to the song. Um, on the outside, it just seems like a funny kind of song, something that, like, I don't know, like, Bo Burnham would write, yeah. you know, which is literally, like, just funny for the sake of being funny which like nothing's wrong with writing yeah. comedic music i love like comedy rap i love comedic music but um this has way more depth there's to so much it. more layers so many so many layers as well as like i said the chorus is an interpolation of the old like sesame street number pinball sketch um just really fun i <laughs> yeah. he, he uses like all sorts of just weird things to his to his advantage um and then the album just gets stranger from that with the track Happy Holidays. Happy Holidays. Which I, just, I just still can't wrap my brain around. This is produced by Mark Ronson, the same guy who has produced for... Uh, Amy Winehouse, Bruno Mars, Queen Tame Stoja. Impala. Yeah. I mean, people like that. And it samples Sleigh Ride, like the classic <laughs> Christmas song. Not to mention, again... Paul is Jewish, and he's rapping about Christmas and the notion of giving at Christmas time, and how that kind of dies out after the season is done. And um, I, not something that people talk about all the time. It samples a Christmas song. It is done by Mark Ronson. I, I would think that he could whip up something else on here, but surprisingly, it's, all this stuff works. It's just really a grab well. bag of everything, just like a bunch of random shit thrown together, like. No rapper should ever, like, sample sleigh bells, ever, because it just seems really goofy and childish. But I think with MC Paul Barman, I think his persona is almost kind of goofy and childish, so it works very, very well. And since it is a very poetic form, it fits perfectly over this very just strange kind of holiday. Oh, yeah. Thing. I think Barman is... Barman's goofy, but the things he raps about are not always goofy. It's the contrast that makes this record so fun. It's yeah. that you hear the persona, you hear the Jerry Seinfeld like voice, but what the ideas that he has present are way more beyond the uh, just his personality. His 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 appearance doesn't match his ideas. And I think that's something... His, I, his ideas don't match his delivery. Yeah. Nothing matches here. Yeah. And but I, it all works together really beautifully to create some really cool, um, just awesome sounding tracks here. I think it's something uh, similar that I compared to uh, Danny Brown, especially Atrocity Exhibition, the dark tones that are unmatched with Danny's very nasally like characteristics. I've been sweating like I'm in a... Like... That's yeah. and Steve Walmart does the same thing with his just very Jerry Seinfeld like voice, where Danny Brown is very nasally and very up there. I think Kendrick even Kendrick Lamar follows that with his very nasally. Voice the voices well. don't always match the yeah. performances. Here. I th it, the contrast of the two is what makes this so special. Mm -hmm. Um, of course, after that, it's oh snap, just kind of like a sketch. Um, doesn't really mean like a whole lot, which leads into Meat and Bone, which is a, a really long track. Um, it's mostly about mortality and kind of humanity in general um, and how we're all just kind of meat and bone. We're all just kind of like f flesh. 
Um, but of course you would never get that unless you like really look into the lyrics and like what he's doing here. Also the sample he uses here is like really bizarre. Yeah. The monkeys, monkeys eat with their feet. feet. <laughs> and also I think uh, crazy stuff. On this track he also um, interpolates some lines that he gave on a previous mo- Mike Eagle track on the tail end. Yeah. For, on something on uh, the late night EP or whatever it's called. Dark comedy. No. Dark Comedy Late Show, is that what it's called? I split my pants or something like that. I forget what the entire (laughs) title of the EP is. But, uh, yeah, I think Open My Giggle, or not Open My Giggle, MC Paul Barman, especially in this track, it's just constant flow. It's six minutes of just, like, constant flow going through so many styles, and you have the weird sample attached on it. It's just this very... It's really bizarre bizarre sounding. And it's very unique to him. It's this this almost weird headspace that he's able to put you in in this like almost dome of just like confusion that he provides. But it's very like um, disorienting. Yeah. When you when you get in there, um, but you can't help but like enjoy it. The next track, actually, Leapfrog. I read up a little bit about this track, and it is just amazing, like how Paul Barman's brain works and how. He creates music. He said he wrote this on a subway and was trying to make it so when he rapped, the ending syllable would actually line up with the syllable of the the first syllable of the next line and saying that he would say both words like at once or like track it in a way that both words would just be like on one. And it would make sense like as a whole um, long line. And it worked. I mean, you could it, it doesn't do that specifically in the song because I think it sounded bad or um, he, he decided like he didn't like how it sounded when it was all tracked but that's just the way that he writes songs just crazy stuff like that it's it's just a display of how fast he can spit how many levels of rhyming he can create there are so many like inner rhymes here um, as well as rhymes across the stanza rhymes across a couple of lines um, just blows me away every time I listen to him. It just gives like a, a greater perspective just how talented and, and well um, written this guy is. Um, of course, Harry Moth Isle Part 2 is off of here. Harry Moth Isle uh, Part 1 was on Paul Lulia back in 2002. Um, it, just really bizarre. It's, it's kind of a storytelling or a pickup of the last like Harry Moth Isle. Um, it's honestly probably my least favorite track on here. It's a little too ridiculous, I felt, for Barman. Um, even for Barman, I yeah. guess. And I found it to be kind of unfunny. For it was, It's supposed to be kind of a, a, a comedy or a funny track intentionally. Like, some of these are supposed to be at their surface, but yeah. go deeper towards the, like, once you get into them. Um, but this one, I think, is just supposed to be, like, comedy all around. And that's what makes it stand out the most is because it is just comedy there's no depth to it yeah there's no depth to it and so i I just kind of found it to be one of the weaker moments but if i like there are positives i think the beat here is really ambitious and interesting and kept me engaged at least um as far as a musical standpoint went i just didn't think that the verses were as well crafted and um in depth as as pretty much every other song on here um after that is undoing aloneness this is the the only title like stylized differently it's all in caps um it's about how art saves like art and art only can save there's tons of rich wordplay um i was actually like just reading into the lines like it like i said on meat and bone um undoing aloneness is really disorienting when you get into it and just kind of listen to it on a surface level but um there comes a point where like barman is repeating the same line multiple times but with emphasis on different syllables to create new words and new like rhymes of um like what it changes it completely changes the line's meaning once you like get into it and and actually like look at what he's doing i'll have to bring up the lines here it's just very surreal like i i just don't a lot of the stuff that mc paul barman's doing on the record it's just stuff i can't really wrap my head around it's no, just so just, unique he's to him. so um language savvy here he says um i never met a forward playmate i didn't trust Later on, he says, I never met a four wordplay mate I didn't trust. <laughs> same words, same sounds, <laughs> completely different meaning. Uh, just just crazy how feel I reach time I reach toward hidden lust. Um, 
even an Amina rhetorical flourish where he says, whether in Amina Ray or a kill floor, it's sure. <laughs> I just cra- <laughs> It's the same sounds, but different words and different divisions. And it creates completely new lines. It's crazy the way that he, this is just an example of what art can do. Yeah. It's, I, again, I can't wrap my head around how he's able to be so talented at this. It is very poetic. Like, I feel like when you kind of delve into MC Palmer Barman's uh, lyricism on this album, it's almost like developing into, like, poetry and analyzing poetry. And it's very hard to understand the full concept of everything that is going on because there's so much wordplay, there's so much art that is being created that it's more, I think, the only person that can truly understand that everything's happening is MC Paul Barman. And I think that's what makes this record so so much so great is that it takes a lot from poetry more than it does i would say traditional hip-hop yeah barman is um unbelievably smart yeah and unbelievably like well educated on the things that he's rapping about i mean he's honestly probably smarter than even the people that think that they're smarter than him yeah i think he just has like an, an obvious edge over everybody else but he doesn't rub it in your face yeah he's using that he's using his smarts to educate and to spread that knowledge rather than than uh, brag about how much he knows, which I think is kind of a, a theme on the last two tracks, Age War and Antennas featuring Master Ace. Um, it's talking about it's kind of an anthem for the youth in two parts, talking about young people creating art and music and how older people are denying that young people can do anything and are, are capable of anything, saying like young cats make, make dope raps. Yeah. You know, that's the that's the ending line, followed up like an instrumental play out, just um, I think means a lot, especially in the the way of hip hop or like um, flashback to when Lil Yachty said that like Tupac didn't matter and he's just making music like for the kids. Yeah, he lets kids have fun. And um, that's like a lot of old hip hop heads were, were getting really mad at Yachty and I think still kind of hold a grudge against Yachty because they disrespected a master, disrespected an elder, when in reality... Like, what does that all even mean? Tupac made art, and Lil Yachty is making art now. And Paul Barman is making art in the realm of hip-hop, where nobody looks like him, and nobody acts like him, and nobody takes him seriously, when in reality, everybody should be taken kind of seriously for what they're doing, and and their art should be taken um, at at face value kind of the same way. Um, In closing, Barman is doing something that a lot of rappers aren't, offering to us it's not specifically conscious rap it's not specifically comedy rap and it's more so rap about like social change and problems without being super preachy about it it's it's delivered in a very accessible way um but also inaccessible barman's just kind of a paradox walking um deliver he delivers his raps in a way that make you think but also um you're able to appreciate like the layers of rhyming he achieves so you can bob your head along to this and rap along to it if you're lucky like if you if you're lucky enough to learn all these words i cannot fathom how he does that but um you can bob your head along to it you can enjoy it at face value you can think it's funny or you can delve into it like we did and and find more in the project there's just kind of something for everybody um that like i said earlier like the tons of features and notable producers um they only add to this record yeah. they don't stand as a crutch um they don't you know they they don't um serve to prop barman up and say like we had to have this feature he yeah. chose to have a feature because he liked what they were saying he chose to have their production because he liked their production not because he needed the production um, and, and final thoughts, like the only thing I can really critique this album on is I think it kind of follows too much of the same style occasionally. I think there's too many short tracks on here and that kind of it's that's not always a downfall. But I think on this record, there's too many short tracks that kind of follow the same ideas or they're too short in retrospect to everything else. There's too many like one minute, 30 tracks on here where I feel like he expresses idea to his fullest extent. And then he kind of just like he has he doesn't have anything left because he, he ran out of breath of anything to say on the subject. So I think that's the only thing I can really say is there's too many of these like kind of short tracks where I think it would have been nicer if 
some of the shorter tracks were kind of not combined, but yeah. kind of uh, further expanded on to some more full-fledged tracks. I think the production on this album is very solid. Um, the only moment I think my least favorite moment of this project is the finale. I think Master Ace just isn't able to connect with MC Paul Bomber in the way of Mike Eagle is. I think it's just kind of just a pointless feature in the, the grander scheme of things. And it, I think the production, the, the, the finale is very solid, but I think... It's just, it's not as a hard-hitting punch or a, as a, a, a grand punch, I think, as I wanted on the project. But those in the end, those are the only things I can really critique about this album. I yeah. think this album is very verbose. It's very wordy. It's very, like, lengthy. He has a lot to say about subjects, and there's a lot to analyze about these subjects, and there's a lot to just make about this album. And it's not something that I feel like can be fully explained in like 30 minutes. But I think MC Palmer put like nine years of work into one album. And it truly shows this is a fantastic record. This really is his magnum this, opus. Th- it is a magnum opus for a reason. I think he did a lot of work on this album to make it the best project it is. It's just so strange. It's so out there. It's so it, it is it's slam poetry meeting hip hop in this weird blend of art rap, slam poetry and with contemporary features such as Open Mike Eagle and contemporary producers such as Questlove, Mark Ronson, um, MF Doom. There's just so many elements to this that make it so strange. The fact that Questlove even knows MC Paul Barman is the strangest fucking thing to me. Um, and the fact that he agrees to do multiple tracks with them, I even think is stranger. But everything just comes together. This, this album should not exist. It's, there's just so many things about it that I think, like... If you if you try to explain them, they seem like they shouldn't work. A very wordy, very poetic hip hop album by Jerry Seinfeld is something that shouldn't exist. But MC Paul Martin put so much character and so much hard work into it that it makes it a very spectacular magnum opus that puts a lot of hip modern contemporary hip hop rap hip hop rappers modern contemporary rappers to shame because they aren't able to produce the quality of hip-hop that is intelligent, as poetic, as thought-provoking as this. And I think that's what makes this record so spectacular. I think in the end, that only thing, again, the only thing that hurts it is there's just too many, uh, there's too many, like, kind of shorter tracks that kind of almost blend together in a sense. Yeah. But in the end, I'd rather be surprised and I'd rather rather be left wanting more than having too much. And I think in the end, it kind of hits that perfect balance of something that we said earlier this year about JPEG Mafia's veteran, that there, there were too many short moments, but we were left wanting more instead of having too much. And it left us in the perfect headspace of we received enough. And I think MC Paul Barman does a great job with a lot of these shorter tracks and a lot of the flow out through the entire album, very consistent. All the producers, since there are so many of them, it seems there's a lot of them, but they all seem very uniform in a sense. They all like uh, work together like in the same studio. Yeah. It's very, there's a lot of them, but at the same time, it's very uniform, but not uniform where the characteristics of the production Fallout, like the track Doom produced, you still know it's Doom production on it. You oh, still yeah. get that vibe. Mark Ronson, very. I never would have known, but <laughs> I never would have known, but it's very, it still makes sense. very strange characteristic to it. Quality Questlove, very groovy, very almost. That at, live drumming though is just strange, cool. atmospheric in a sense. It provides this like spatial plane that it takes you to. That's it's really just, cool. It's very strange. This album's very strange, and I think. It is one of the best listens I've had all year. I just don't have anything else to say about it because it is just so out there and I, I can't say anything anymore. And honestly, I love this record. I think this record's fucking fantastic. It does it does so much. It is so wordy, but at the same time, it's able to balance itself. It's able to support all everything it has to say by being so more into depth than what you actually read. Um, this is true. Yeah, I'm feeling I'm feeling nine and a half on this. I actually really enjoy this record. I think it's fantastic, and it is probably one of the best. Hip- it is the best hip hop record of the year I've heard so far, in my opinion. I think it's phenomenal, and I think MC Paul Barman took nine years and made magnum opus for a reason. He vanished off the face of the earth for something, and I I hope you know it took him nine years to make this record. I hope we get more MC Paul Barman in the future because I think I think. <laughs> I think I, we need more of them. I think we need more artists like MC Paul Borman, very poetic, very political, but at the same time, very, very unique in characteristics. Shows a depth to hip hop, not just trying to follow modern standards. And yeah, I think it's, it's a phenomenal record. Nice. 
Uh, I think I'll, I also struggle to give it anything but a nine and a half. I have thought about this all week. Um, I've, I've listened to it every day since the moment it came out. You know, I've um, it, it's joining the Kings Club on my <laughs> list. So far, the Kings Club only has three members, so I think it's it's definitely a worthy um, member of of my list here. Is I I cannot wait to see what he comes out with. Even if it wait, even if it takes like another nine years, I will patiently wait those <laughs> nine years for another album. I don't want to wait nine years, but if this album doesn't come out until what twenty twenty seven, then I will wait that long <laughs> if it is this good. Yeah, this is phenomenal. I definitely recommend you check it out because if you're not, you're missing out on just very poetic, very. You're seriously missing out. Experience, very artistic. Honestly, one of the best art rap albums I've ever heard, and uh, I'm I'm glad that Open Mike was a part of this too, yeah. because it, it truly cements it as an art rap record, to almost end all our art rap records. <sighs> um, but yeah, um, if you want to hear more of our reviews on a bunch of different projects, check out our YouTube channel. We do a weekly show called the Anthony and Todd Show. It's a podcast on Apple Music and Spotify. If you want to listen, link's down in the description. But until next time, guys, I've been Vincent. I'm Trevor. And we'll see you next time, boyos. Bye.